Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we're taking a look at how to create a system to scatter objects, models onto a height field inside of Houdini based on the slope. So like if you have a landscape, you want to put houses or little buildings on there, you're not going to want to put them on like really steep slopes, obviously. So this will be a nice little introduction to some simple vex, making some things happen. It'll be nice and easy and you don't need a PhD to make this happen. So here you can see we've got a simple system. You see there's these steeper parts where no houses get added onto and you got these less steep parts where there are houses on. So we will go ahead and turn this off and create a new geometry node and dive right into here and we'll add a height field and we'll make this smaller just because why not? And then we'll add a height field noise right there you can see this is the same one as before so maybe just for fun we will offset this a bit and get a different terrain here so what's looking good this looks pretty good so we've got these nice flat parts that we'll want to add houses to and we got these steeper parts where we don't want to build so now we'll go and get to making our thing and we will pop down a height field convert and a nice little tip is if you hit shift and then enter, it'll automatically add it on. So now you see we get polygons here. If we go over to our geometry spreadsheet, with that comes points. Excellent. So now we'll add normals to these points and then we'll use that to decide our slope. So a nice little easy way. So we'll drop down a normal node and we will go and change these to points. And now if we go to our geometry spreadsheet, we can see we get normals here and X and Y and NZ. And if you aren't sure what normals are, they are just a little thing that tell the computer what direction things are going. So it's so kind of small now. So if I hit D, we can probably make these bigger. There we go. Scale our normals up. So now you can see we are getting the angle of the points for free here. So as they sort of angle off more, we don't want houses there. And as they are more angled up, then we do want houses there. So if we go back to our geometry spreadsheet, we can see we get N, X, N, Y, and N, Z, and that, of course, corresponds to the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. So we'll do this based on the normal on the X axis. So the closer this is to 1, the steeper the slope is. And so now we'll just use that information to go and add in a point wrangle. And in here, we will define a quick little variable. So if you want to define a variable, you drop down the type of variables in this case will be a float which means you can get decimal places and then the name of it will be slope and then we're going to make a controller for this so you do chf which means channel float i think and that'll create a slider and then you just name that slider slope and you add a semicolon and if we hit this little button here you see you get this nice little slider so this sets the value for this variable that we'll reference in just the next line so for this, we're just going to write a quick little if statement. So this works just like it reads. So if, and then our normal, so that is at n dot y, and you use the at symbol when if you're referencing an attribute. So at n dot y. So if we go back to our geometry spreadsheet and we go here, you see n, y. You don't use the brackets in VEX, you do dot. So just remember that. So there's an attribute, so at n dot y. And if that is greater than slope, which we defined up above, then you put a curly bracket here and two lines down, another curly bracket, then tab. And in here, you're going to write what happens if this gets executed or if these points are met. And then you do, in this case, we're going to add it to a group, which actually forgot to add in before. So real quick, add in a group node and drag this in. And we will create it on points and we'll call this group something like place because we're going to place stuff on it. So now back in here, we're going to tell Houdini to add the point to the group that we just made only if the slope is greater than this value. So for this, we have to use the set point group function. So S-E-T-P-O-I-N-T-G-R-O-U-P. And the arguments this takes is the first one we'll put in zero, which means it's referencing the first input of our point wrangle. And then we type in the group they're referencing, which would be a string called place. Then what point we are going to be adding to the group. So that is the attribute at PT. And you remember just from before, use the at symbol when you're referencing an attribute. And the PT num is something that you get for free on all points. So it's just always there. Then we're going to set this to 
zero, so we'll actually be removing it from the group, and then set the mode to set. And if you're ever wondering what these arguments are, you can of course go to the Houdini documentation. And another little helpful thing that I found is if you have VS Code installed on your computer, Visual Studio Code, which is free, then it's got much better autocomplete. So you set vex in, and then you can see if we have set point group, you get all the things that you need right here. So geo handle is a little input here, name, name of the group, point, what point you're using, value, mode, all that. So that's really helped me out. I know there's a way to set up an external editor in here, but you know, you've only got so much time. So also be sure that we have the semicolon at the end. And now you see nothing's changed. If we go over to our geometry spreadsheet again, you see we've got all, all of our groups set to zero. That's because our slope is a little bit small right now. So as we bring this up, you see gradually things start popping onto one in this column here. So we'll keep it at 0.8 for now, and we'll go on to the next thing. So we're actually going to, this is actually finding the steep parts. So we're going to use a blast node to go over points, and we're going to use our place group. And now you can see it's deleting these steeper parts. So if we go back to our point wrangle and we bring this guy up, see so it's going to keep deleting stuff the steeper it is. So we just want stuff on the flat parts. We can just add stuff to those. So now that we have that made, we can just add a quick little scatter and copy to points. And this should actually be in the other input. And then we'll add a box. Copy this there. And we can merge these together. So we will take our this guy and merge it with go up to our height field convert and so we're getting some goofy normals on our height field so we can just go over and add a normal node and drag this in and that fixes that we can turn these normals off and you can see we get our cubes right in here and of course we can add a transform and stuff to fix things. So pre-transform, just move these up a bit. And now let's say that we don't like that they're sort of showing they're turning on the slope. We can easily fix that by adding down another point wrangle. So, and setting the normal to set, which is what you need to do for a vector here, zero comma one comma zero. So that will be just a straight up and down y vector or normal. You see now they're all just right straight up and down. And of course you can add any sort of random scale that you want to this or do any other sort of cool things. Use cooler models, use cooler landscapes. Um, you know, maybe sparse out some of this stuff down here. There's all sorts of fun things that you can do, but that is just a nice basic setup for getting some procedural scattering on here. So whether you're doing landscapes or game things or just goofing around with some fun stuff, there you have it. A nice, simple little setup for getting this done. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you liked, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. I know there are some way smarter Houdini people out there than me. So if you're out there and you see a better way of doing this, be sure to leave this down in the comments and thumbs it up if you see a, a good way or just a different way because there's a million and one ways to do things in Houdini, and that's part of the absolute fun of it, and there are some really smart people out there. So if you're one of those really smart people, then, you know, I would love to hear from you, because I like smart people. They make me feel dumb, and that's a lot of fun. Also, if you enjoy this sort of stuff, be sure to subscribe to Mises Media YouTube channel and turn on notifications. And if you really want to help support the channel, go over to MiesenMedia.com slash products, and you can check out all the cool stuff we have there. There's some color grading stuff, there's some motion graphics stuff, will be more stuff soon. If Houdini stuff, if people like that, and I'm sure there'll be some Houdini stuff on there eventually, which will be a lot of fun. So anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Once again, I'm Theo with Meester Media. We have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.